video I'm going to show you some ancient woodland indicators. Now most of these plants can live in quite large numbers in other habitats but if you're starting to see a number of these plants together in one woodland then start to think maybe this is an ancient woodland. The best time to go and see them is in April and early May before the trees have managed to grow their leaves properly and the canopy closes over and shades all the plants out. So do enjoy this video and I hope you learn something. This is Yellow Archangel. It's an ancient woodland indicator and it looks like a nettle, doesn't it? It's in the mint or dead nettle family and you can see the flower has the hood and the lip underneath. So you can see a hood on the top here and a little lip underneath. That one's yellow archangel and next to it just here is some stinging nettle so you can see it's got a nettle like leaf but it's not a stinging nettle. This is wild garlic and it's usually found in woodlands and shady places. So we have these um, normal shaped leaves. If you actually break a bit off and smell it then it smells of garlic or onion and it tastes of onion as well you can actually eat this. The flowers have six petals and they're in a, a cluster with a, a big sepal on either side and again you can eat them as well they taste like onion too. These are wooden enemies this is early April and they're out in flower in the woodlands and we've got the leaf here, this uh, pinnate leaf. And the flowers have six petals and lots of stamens in them. This is dog's mercury. You usually find it in shady places like woodlands and hedgerows. The flower is just this little tiny green thing, so it's, it's nothing special. Um, and it often carpets woodland floors. So just look out for this strange little greenish flower that it has on a stem. Here's some dog's mercury on the woodland floor. So it can carpet it quite thickly. Here we have lords and ladies. So we have this arrow shaped leaf and this very strange flower with a hood. Like a, a, like a cowl. And um, this thing here is called a spadix and it also has a bulgy area down here and actually it's got a, a fly trap in it so the flies are attracted to go into here into the base and it can't get back out again and then the next morning the little stamens that are holding them in die off and the flies can escape once they've done their job and pollinated it. There's a whole cluster of lords and ladies here. Just on a forest floor. So this is the lords and ladies that I've dissected and if we get a bit more close up you can see that inside here there's some little stamens. So, so the, the flies crawl in past this sort of one-way trap. They crawl around gathering the pollen and depositing it onto the female part which is here and then these little stamens die off um, overnight and the flies can escape so it's kind of like a little trap. Fascinating. This is a familiar spring flower also ancient woodland indicator but it can grow out in the open as well. Here it's actually growing in a, in a churchyard on the grass but it can be on hedgerows and things like that. So it's a lovely pale yellow flower with a darker yellow center to it and um, they have spatulate leaves, quite pale green and if you actually pull one of the flowers off you'll notice that it's, it's actually a, a tubular flower that then splays out and forms the five petals. So that's a tubular flower rather than having five separate petals right down to the base. Here's a little wild strawberry and they have these trifoliate leaves 
bit like a clover but with serrated edges and there's little tiny five petaled white flower with lots of stamens in the middle of it and then later on it'll have little tiny miniature strawberries. This is a common dog violet and the leaves are heart shaped so we've got a few leaves here and it's got this lovely little violet flower and the way you can tell between this and sweet violet or hairy violet is that the sepals are pointed so this little bit here is pointed and also you look at the spur on the violets and it says in the book creamy a creamy coloured spur so that's a common dog violet here we have some Spanish bluebells these aren't like our English bluebells they're a lot bigger so the plant and the leaves are much bolder and bigger and the flowers have upright stems so with the British bluebells they droop over and with the Spanish ones they're upright and they tend to be a paler blue as well so don't get mixed up with these two these have come over from Spain obviously and are available in garden centres they are not our native British ones so you can see this is here an English bluebell and you can see here that the flowers are a lot darker and they're drooping down and also the leaves are a lot finer as well so it's quite a dainty plant absolutely stunning blue so this rather striking plant is called herb paris it's quite different from anything else you'll see um because it's got these big four leaves all arranged together and then a sort of spike at the top and it forms a little berry at the top here and this is one with a bud just coming out and actually this one's got five leaves and they grow in the woods in little glades here are some lesser celandines they're in the buttercup family and they're very pretty um, shiny like buttercups but with more petals and they have these heart-shaped leaves heart-shaped like that and glossy so you only see these during the spring and the rest of the year they die off and you don't see any evidence of them at all this is wood rough a dainty little flower with four petaled flowers and these whorled leaves. It doesn't grow very tall and it lives in ancient woodlands. Here we've got some pignut. So this beautiful little umbellifer. And then if you have a look down, it's got quite feathery leaves. And there's a little bit more of it just here. This one's quite tall actually. Here's one of my favorite woodland flowers, quite small. It has a sort of clover-like leaf and little white flowers. This one's called wood sorrel. here is also an ancient woodland indicator and I'll just show you where it is it's in a in an ancient woodland here in Devon it's quite a dainty little plant it's an umbellifer as you can see by the way the flower is formed it's got very smooth stems and just little tiny clusters of flowers on the top of it the leaves so that's a strawberry leaf. Let's take that one out of the way a minute. These are the leaves here, so they're slightly glossy, palmate, and there's another leaf there. So this one is sanical. This is a rather magnificent ancient woodland indicator called wood spurge, and it's in the euphorbia family, so it has these sort of greenish leaves. The flowers are actually tiny little things right in there. You can't see them very well. 
um, and this is just bracts. So you have these funny circular br bracts around them and then um, it has these leaves up the stem. So this one's just on a sort of sunny glade in a, well a ride in a woodland. And the thing with euphorbias is if you break the stem, I'll just break a little bit, it, it has a white sap. So that's, uh, and this can be quite irritating actually, so you can see the white sap there. So it's got an dainty grass, it's called wood melic, and this is an ancient woodland indicator. It's a very delicate grass, only lives in very shady places and quite distinctive. This plant here is yellow pimpernel and it's an ancient woodland indicator. It has very long stems on the flowers and the leaves are in pairs. And it's usually just scrambling around on the ground, so it's quite a low growing plant. And this particular one, um, as normal for this plant, is just in a slightly sunny open area within a woodland. This dainty little plant is always found in the shade, and it's called Enchanter's Nightshade. You can see it's got little tiny white flowers. And it's quite furry, softly hairy. It's just got ordinary leaves. The stems are, f are hairy, but the leaves aren't particularly hairy. They are a bit hairy. And it's in a, a racine. And finally, one of my favourites, the wild daffodils. And these are um, found in clearings in woodlands or amongst the trees. They're much smaller than normal daffodils with pale petals at the back and a darker yellow trumpet. They're a very dainty little plant and they're really beautiful. I hope you found that useful and you learnt some ancient woodland indicators. Thank you for joining me. See you again soon.